Okay, this is the uh, visualization of the audio waves through a spectrogram visualization uh, piece of software. This will show if there is any manipulation of audio, i.e. if the video, the audio from the video has been uh, altered in any way. Um, like it was claimed that the audio was chopped up and um, made to say something completely different. Um, the visualization through the spectrogram will show that this did not take place. So I'm going to run my last video, the audio part of my last video, and you'll hear my voice. After that, you will have the piece of audio in question and then the song at the end. So you will see the difference in the audio spectrum there uh, in a visual form. Hello? Hello? Cecil? It's Lieutenant Colombo here. I just thought I was in the area and I thought I would drop by. I was wondering, do you like dogs, Cecil? I have a nice dog myself. I really like dogs. Do you like dogs? Do you know what I was wondering, Cecil? Does your neighbours have dogs? I see. Your neighbours have dogs. And did your neighbours have dogs about, say, 11 years ago? When you made a certain video? Well, the video that you've recorded shows me that um, your neighbours did have dogs. And guess what, Cecil? Oh, this is the Columbo moment here. While you were making that video, your dog in the background, or the dog on the street, was barking the whole way through. If the video was edited, there would be cuts in the dog barking and there would be cuts in your voice as well, which the audio file is going to be shown right now where it shows that there is no cuts in the audio. The tones stay within a, a, a certain parameter. There is no sharp changes in tone. But... I didn't know about the dog until I ha enhanced the audio, Cecil. You would have got away with it if it wasn't for the pesky dog, Cecil. Oh my, oh my, oh my. Roll it. When I was 15, 16, and 17, I lived with my aunt. My mom's cousin, actually, but I consider her my aunt. She had two daughters who I would babysit. He was like five or six years younger than me and my brothers and sisters. We all know how kids are when they're young and underage and they don't have good parenting and they're not watched all the time. And, and technically, they're not even my mom's cousins, so we're not even blood related. And I don't want my so-called cousin to think I'm throwing out her business like that. Or trying to make her look bad. So I'm not going to say her name, the girl I was accused of. So I'm not going to say her name. I'm just going to tell you what happened. Me, her, and her sister was doing shit behind our parents' back because we were we were rebelling preteens, right? Sorry, got it. Got food on my pee. Huh. Got a little food. Oh, well, I'll get it out in a minute. Well, we were doing shit behind our parents' back. We were doing sexual shit. And them girls approached me with this shit. I feel like them girls were molested because they were approaching me and my brother, Joey, with it. Like messing with this. Well, we were babysitting them because we were preteens. We wasn't 18. We were all underage to be to be uh, technical with you guys. So how can an underage kid be a child molester first and foremost? All right? 
So when my so-called sister seen me so-called molest her in her sleep and while we were asleep is a lie because, like I told you, me and those girls and my brother and her sister were all, we knew we was not related and we were all doing sexual shit when behind our parents' backs. And when I got busted doing things with her sexually that she, that us as underage kids were allowing each other to do one night, my sister, who didn't know any better, thought I was violating her, which it wasn't the case. I wasn't doing anything she didn't want me to do. She told me to do it. Uh, my sister didn't know that part. She just seen it for the first time and found out about it for the first time. And she assumed that I was doing something that the girl didn't know about. First impression, that's what she thought. Two years later, so my sister was going around saying I was, I was a child molester, even though I was a child anyways. And she didn't know that me and the girl were actually uh, willingly doing shit with each other for years. Because we're not related and we were we were rebelling against our parents. So with my sister spreading that rumor for so long and the girl even going along with it and saying that that's what I did too because she was embarrassed and didn't want to she didn't want anybody to know that she would it was uh that she was willing to do it that she was the reason why it was even happening in the first place. She didn't want that part to be known. So she went along with my sister. Yeah, yeah, that's what he did. He molested me. No, I didn't. You know I didn't. You know you were the one that initiated me, and we were both underage. So just because I got busted doing what you told me you wanted me to do to you that night, I have to suffer because you don't want the truth to be known, what really happened. Because you're embarrassed to let the family know what really happened. That we were both willingly underage and doing sexual shit to, to each other. Kids do shit that they know they're not supposed to do when they're young. It's okay. It's okay to admit it. It's okay to come out about it. We're all human. None of us are perfect. Okay, so with my sister spreading that bullshit, for one thing, my sister would say, oh, he's a child molester behind my back, but then turn around and tell me to my face and behind my back that I'm her favorite brother. My sister was molested and raped since the time she was two years old. So in her mind, every man is a child molester. every man is in her eyes so since that rumor I told my friend my partner rhyme gutter about it and one time he got mad at me when me and him fell out and we wasn't friends for a while he told intense that bullshit and at that time even even Greg gutter music didn't even know the details of what really happened I tried to tell him but he wasn't going to tell that part when me and him was enemies at the time he was just trying to hurt me back in 2011. When me and Greg was not friends for a while, for whatever reason, we fell out. He went to Intense, took his side on the on the whole C Love Cecil Crack Corn disc song, and all that shit, and spilled some shit that he didn't know he was talking about at the time. This is before me and Greg was really ever became kind of close. To you fair Spanish ladies, farewell and adieu to you ladies of Spain, for we've received orders for to sail back to Boston, and so never more shall we see you again. <laughs> It's very ironic that uh, Cecil kept throwing around the words paranormal research uh, a lot. And paranormal research is what God is ass. How ironic. Folks, if you bring this audio to an audio engineer they will give you more details than what I can give you here but from the tests that I've done today um, I don't see how this audio or video is edited in any way 
Um, I just I don't see it. I don't see the breaks in the um, waveforms. The waveforms are flowing naturally as the way they should be. Um, yeah, uh, getting the dog in the background was was a pure and utter accident and an afterthought. But very often the background is is the thing that gives gives it away. Um, in order to in order to take out a piece of audio to replace it with something else what happens is when you take out the words that the person is saying you also take out the background audio and you have to go to the through the trouble of putting the background audio back it is extremely messy it's extremely difficult and I can't see where somebody would actually go to the time and the trouble to actually do that. It is it's extremely difficult. So, yeah, it is what it is, folks. You go inside the cage. Cage goes in the water. You go in the water. Sharks in the water. Our shark. Farewell and adieu to you fair Spanish ladies. Farewell and adieu to you ladies of Spain. For we've received orders for to sail back to Boston. And so never more shall we see you again. <laughs>